Welcome to Magic Minutes by MGIC, mortgage industry training that helps you expand your knowledge and skills. Before we get started, take a moment to review our legal disclaimer. MGIC is providing this as general information based on current industry guidelines at the time of this recording. It is always advised that you seek the guidance of your own compliance and regulatory departments. Hello, and welcome to our series on analyzing self-employed income. I'm Sandra Sweeney, Senior Customer Trainer and Program Designer for MGIC. In this short tutorial, we'll discuss how we go about documenting our self-employed borrower's loan file. What is the required documentation? We'll identify what documentation is needed in order to verify self-employed income. We will explore some differences between Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac requirements. We will end with a short discussion of what supporting documentation may be needed. So, let's get started. In our last tutorial, we discovered that how a self-employed borrower's file is documented can depend on how they have formed their business. Now we will take that knowledge and take it a step further to uncover exactly what is required to be in the self-employed borrower's loan file. The short answer to this question is that we want to document the file with sufficient documentation in order to make an appropriate decision. Remember, we are trying to show that the income is stable and likely to continue. And the best way to do that is to show a history of consistent or positive earning trends. So documenting a file appropriately is a balancing act. We want to follow our lending guidelines for the requirements, but we don't want to over-document. Additionally, we may need to include supporting documentation in order to allow the file to tell our borrower's story. So where do we start? Like all loan requests, the review process starts with the borrower's loan application. Many times, this is the first time we realize that we have a self-employed borrower because in the employment section of the ERLA, the borrower has indicated that they have an ownership interest in a business. Additionally, we will verify the self-employed borrower's employment and income by requesting copies of their signed federal income tax returns, both individual and business that were filed with the IRS, along with all applicable schedules. Lastly, we will want to document how we went about calculating our income by the use of an income calculation worksheet. You could use Fannie Mae's 1084, Freddie Mac's 91, or you could certainly download our MGIC SAM worksheet. Our new all-in-one self-employed income calculator is designed to be an all-encompassing tool for the analysis and calculation of self-employed income. This calculator includes four worksheets and one calculation tool. The calculator can be accessed at mgic.com forward slash SEB. What are the next steps? The next steps we will take from here are dependent on who our ultimate investor is. Will the loan be delivered to Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae? Because as you will see, it does make a difference. Let's look at what Freddie Mac says first. In Freddie Mac's Selling Guide, Section 5304-1, the documentation requirements for self-employed borrowers are outlined. Freddie Mac bases their decision as to what documentation is required on how many years the business has been in existence. Notice the highlighted area. The borrower must have had an ownership interest of 25% or more in the same business for at least five years. If you are working with Freddie Mac's Loan Product Advisor, then you will see that the feedback messaging indicates that if the business has been in existence for five years or more, then only the most recent year of individual and business tax returns are required. Otherwise, you will be tasked with reviewing the most recent two years. So for Freddie Mac, it's all about how long the business has been in operation and how long the borrower has had ownership in that particular business. With a loan product advisor approval, if the business has been in operation and the borrower has had ownership for five years or more, then the most recent personal and business tax returns are needed. 
If the business has been in operation or the borrower has had ownership for less than five years, then we would be tasked with the review of two years of both personal and business returns. Let's take a look at a scenario regarding this concept. Scenario number one involves a borrower who recently received an ownership interest from a family-owned business. Sunita has worked for Roasted Beans, a family-owned coffee shop, for six years. She received a 25% ownership interest in the business three years ago. So the question is, what documentation is needed with a loan product advisor approval? In this case, since Sunita only has a three-year history of ownership in the business, the most recent two years of individual and business tax returns are required. Let's take a look at a second scenario. Scenario number two involves a business that restructured. Six years ago, Alexa opened her florist shop as a sole proprietor. During that time, her business flourished. Two years ago, she restructured the business and took on a partner. Since that time, she has reported her income to the IRS using partnership returns. Question, with a loan product advisor approval, what documentation is needed? Answer, since the business remained the same prior to and after the restructuring from a sole proprietorship to a partnership, and the business has filed at least one year of tax returns after the new entity was formed, only the most recent year of individual and business tax returns are required. Turning now to Fannie Mae. In Fannie Mae's Selling Guide Section B3-3.2-01, Fannie Mae addresses how to verify a self-employed borrower's employment and income. Fannie Mae does assess the documentation requirements based on the risk factors present in the file. In some cases, two years of individual and business tax returns are required with the option of waiving business tax returns under certain conditions. In other cases, DU will only require one year of personal and business tax returns. Let's take a closer look at the two different messages that you may receive through DU. The first possibility is a message that requires two years of personal and business tax returns. However, the business tax returns can be waived if the borrower has been self-employed in the business for at least five years and the individual tax returns show an increase in self-employed income over the past two years and the borrower is using personal funds for the down payment and closing cost. Notice how these are AND statements. So all of the three conditions must be met. Now let's take a look at the other possible message you may receive through DU. With DU message number two, you will be given the option to provide one year of individual and business tax returns as long as 12 months of self-employment has been reported and a cash flow analysis is completed. Let's look at a scenario involving a loan with a DU approval. Scenario number three involves a file where the loan officer is trying to determine if the business tax returns can be waived. Jason has owned a construction company for the past eight years. He will be using assets from his personal funds and his earning histories for the last two years are as follows. In 2021, Jason received W-2 wages from the S-Corp in the amount of $60,000. His Schedule K-1 shows ordinary income of $95,000. In 2022, Jason received W-2 wages from the S-Corp in the amount of $35,000, and his Schedule K-1 shows ordinary income of $105,000. Question. With a DU approval, can the business tax returns be waived? In this case, we would need to look at the overall earning trends. In 2021, the earnings were $155,000, and in 2022, they were $140,000. So the answer is, as Jason's personal tax returns reflect overall declining income, business tax returns cannot be waived. Moving on to another scenario. Scenario number four. 
Here, our borrower purchased an existing business. David has been self-employed in several auto repair businesses for over 10 years. Four years ago, David purchased Speedy Repair Shop, which had been in operation for 20 years. David's personal tax returns show increased earnings for this business over the last two years, and he is using personal funds for closing. Question. If we have a DU approval, can business tax returns for Speedy Repair Shop be waived? Here the answer is, as David has not been an owner of the business for at least five years, business tax returns for Speedy Repair cannot be waived. What tax returns are needed? The most recent tax returns filed with the IRS are required. So, what if your borrower has not filed their taxes yet? Then you will need to obtain a copy of the extension. A lot of lenders will also require a response from the filing of IRS Form 4506 showing no filing for that year. Additional steps may be recommended. Taking a look at the IRS extension form. When your borrower has exceeded the deadline to file taxes, an IRS Form 4868 should have been filed. Line number four will reflect the personal or business tax liability. You can compare that year's tax total liability with the prior year's filing and see how they relate. Some lenders will also require evidence that the tax liability has been paid. Lenders may take the additional steps of analyzing financial statements since the last filing, or reviewing several months of business bank statements, or if the borrower receives W-2s, 1099s, or K-1s associated with the business, you can review those to see if the income is on track. Some lenders might request IRS Form 941, which is the quarterly filing for the business. Is there any alternative documentation to obtaining tax returns? If a tax transcript is obtained and contains information sufficient to meet verification requirements, it may be used in lieu of other required documentation. It will be dependent on your borrower's business structure and the complexity of their filing as to whether or not transcripts may be used to document self-employed income. The data provided on the tax transcript often lacks certain information needed to fully evaluate the stability of the income. For example, individual rental property data, partnership, and S-corporation information is not clearly delineated in the tax transcripts whereas the sole proprietor information for Schedule C that is contained on the tax transcript may be an effective documentation alternative. In cases where the lender is required to obtain a response from the IRS based on the filing of IRS Form 4506, lenders may, at their discretion, rely on borrower-provided evidence directly from the IRS website that no transcripts are available for the applicable tax year. What else is required to be in the self-employed borrower's file? The lender is required to verify the existence of the borrower's business within 120 days prior to the note date. Verification should be through an acceptable third party, such as a regulatory agency, the phone directory or directory assistance, an internet source, applicable licensing bureau, or the business CPA. Each self-employed borrower's file is different. Some may be very simple, others very complex. Each file should be reviewed to determine if any additional supporting documentation is needed. Set the expectation for your self-employed borrowers that additional documentation, such as profit and loss statements, balance sheets, business bank statements, recent business receipts, CPA letters or copies of state or business licenses along with other documentation may be needed. Now you can see that we have confirmed that documenting a loan file that involves a self-employed borrower may require some additional documentation and some additional steps. By taking the time at the beginning of the process to determine how to correctly document the file, you will expedite the turn time and alleviate some of the pain points. 
This will allow you to navigate more confidently and quickly from application to closing. In this way, understanding the self-employed borrower and how to document their file is a win-win for you, your team, and your borrower. Thank you for joining us for Magic Minutes. We hope this brief tutorial has made a difference for you. For more how-to videos, visit mgic.com training.